Today's one of those days where I put my realtor hat on, not as a broker owner, but as an actual real estate agent. So, we're here at a new listing uh, that we're gonna be putting on the market within the next five to 10 days. And we're gonna get ready by doing some photography. And I highly recommend using professional photographers whenever possible. Not that I'm a pro, but I'm really good at it. It's actually how I put myself, uh, it's how I made my money during my high school days. I studied, uh, I studied photography for three years in high school. It was the only class for three years in high school that I actually liked and I actually went to every single day. Uh, I was not the most avid student in my high school days, but I found something that I loved and I made it work. So we're gonna do some 3D photography with our Matterport camera here. And from there, we're gonna do some still shots. I will not do the editing of the still shots. That part I don't do well, but I've got a really good editor who was born into the family. My daughter Paige is really good at it. So I'll frame the shots out. She'll clean them up color-wise, brighten them up. We'll post them and get ready for our open house series that'll start probably within two weeks. Then from there, we're gonna go show some houses. You haven't seen me do that yet. And then we're going to a home inspection on a property where we got an accepted offer. Um, so we've got a two hour roughly home inspection down in Massapequa. So it'll be a fun filled day of being a realtor. You know, do we do this kind of do we do this kind of work in production on every listing? And the answer to the question is most of the time, yes. Uh, I believe that any home of any size deserves to be shown in its greatest light possible. Uh, and the first showing is clearly always the online the online production. So pictures, videos, and in our case, uh, we we own the 3D Matterport camera, so we like to do the virtual tours. So that's what we're here doing to start off the day. Uh, is it normal for every property? I would say 95% of all the homes that we put on the market, we run through this process. Uh, it's one of our systems, it's one of our, our beliefs in that it does work. Uh, and it definitely does help move homes and get better, get better activity. The more activity you get, the more demand for a house, clearly the higher we can get on an asking price if the home is done well. And the sellers have gone above and beyond in in packaging this house for us today to show in its best light possible. So we're gonna keep moving around the house with our camera and uh, we'll show you the 3D, the 3D tour later today. One of the things I highly recommend when you're listing your home, whether you're having your realtor take the pictures or an outside company doing it, I always recommend that you get at least three or four shots from every single room. Reason why is when you put a house on the market through the multiple listing system, you put your initial set of photos in there and you want one or two good shots of every room depending on the size. But if your house is gonna be on the market more than a couple weeks, one of the things we highly recommend is that you have those photos changed out on a somewhat regular basis. The reason why is on most MLS systems, when you make an update to the listing, it actually moves it up towards the top of the list. So when people are going in and doing their searches, when realtors are doing their searches, the house kind of gets refreshed. So having that different perspective come on board every couple weeks is always a great idea. Just a, fit, a helpful tip, always ask the, the realtor or the photographer to make sure that they get at least three or four good shots of every single room in the house. to do that whole if you lived here series uh, but when you talk to small business owners they they don't understand it and it's I think it's because so many of them are just so immersed in being the operator of their business you know the chef who owns a restaurant the plumber who starts a plumbing company the barber who opens up his own shop um, 
that they don't take the time to understand the importance of, of marketing and networking and getting the word out there. And it's like one guy in a barbershop said to me, why in a million years would I ever want to do that? I said, A, your fear of what's it going to cost is nothing. I'm going to do it all because I want to build my audience. Where it works is like you look at, you look at guys like um, you know, Charlemagne when he put his book out and how him and Gary teamed up and Gary went on The Breakfast Club. Um, why? It was to expose Charlemagne and The Breakfast Club's audience to Gary's audience and vice versa, Gary's to, to Charlemagne's. And these two guys did not have that much overlap in their, in their world. But now all of a sudden you hear, you hear them talking about each other and their followers start to follow each other. So I look at it from our standpoint and say, you know, we may only have six, eight hundred followers who are actual real people in the area. Uh, but if I could get 20 or 30 businesses that each have two or three hundred followers who are local to my market, whose businesses could bring value to my customers and clients, I can expose my audience to them, which hopefully will get them more patients, customers, clients, and hopefully vice versa. I could pick up a few from them as well to help spread the word of what we're doing. So that's part of why I really got to sit down and put, take a hard look at move away from focusing so much on the tactics of what we're doing with social media and come up with the real strategy to say how are we going to do this how are we going to build the audience why do we want to build the audience and what do we want to make what do we want to build that audience for what's the purpose so it's you know I do a lot of the, the charity things I do because I feel it's the right thing to do but at the same time I was at a I was at a fundraising meeting a couple weeks ago and there's your typical networking going on there. And these are all people of like mind. So why shouldn't, you know, you want to do business with people who know you and like you and trust you. Um, and networking is a great way to do that. But, you know, just because I'm raising money for a good cause doesn't mean I can't create an opportunity to grow my business as well. Um, not that that's the reason why I'm doing it, but I also look at it and say, hey, if I can make more money, I could also give more away. So it's why I really need I, I really want to get back to focusing on that you know if you lived here um, kind of video series and I think I need to come up with with almost an intro promo package to send to all these local businesses to explain to them what we're looking to do who we are where we're looking to go why we're looking to help them so we'll see what happens it'll be interesting all right so a quick pit stop back to the office and now we are on our way to our next two meetings in Massapequa. We're going to show a brand new listing that hit the market, I want to say, six days ago. Surprisingly, they haven't, they've chosen not to do an open house. Uh, but from what I've been able to gather off of the MLS info, it looks like a well-priced house in very good condition in what's becoming a very good, a very desirable town. Uh, Massapequa and Massapequa Park. We've noticed over the last couple of years a lot, a lot more activity, a lot more sales. Um, prices are increasing very consistently. So all those signs that everyone's panicking about a market downturn, it's not here yet. And my guess is eventually when there is a correction, the sky will definitely not fall like it did back in 2007, 8, and 9. We'll see a minor, a minor hiccup. Things might slow down a little bit, but interest rates actually dropped again this year. So there's, uh, it makes sense for people to get into it. And for the for the most part, most people have made their fortune in real estate, and owning a home, in my opinion, is still. The smarter investment, aside from the fact that it's yours, you get to do what you want with it. If the market keeps increasing at the rate it has, it'll outpace the S&P 500 like it typically has within a point or two over many years. And if you go back over the history of the last hundred years, they, they both pretty much move at the same pace, just at a slightly different time. So if you're thinking about buying a house and you're paying rent right now, you're paying somebody else's mortgage you might want to think about it. There are, there are some programs out there. If you're a veteran where you literally could put zero down uh, and uh, FHA loans at three, three and a half percent, and there's so many good loan programs out there for people who are, 
who may think they're a troubled borrower because they're self-employed and they don't have the consistent income. We met with one of my lending partners a couple, couple days ago to talk about options and how people who own small businesses really can get into a home based off of their own company's revenue. There's just so many options out there right now. But if you're thinking about it, you should do some digging, do some research. Obviously, we're always here. That's what we do. We consider ourselves information providers before we become uh, salespeople. And uh, I think you should all consider it if you don't own a home yet. Refrigerator built in as well as a nice uh, uh, four stool granite countertop. Okay. You know, it's, uh, it's really tasty. Good deal. Is that a pool or a fountain? There is both. That, oh, really? You have a pool and there's two fountains and there's also a, uh, a fire feature, which is the fire pit alongside of the pool that lights up huh. beautifully. Okay. You want to start out there yeah, or you want to start not? here? We've got the 16-inch TV that stays with the house also. It's attached. It's okay. covered. Uh, pulls out, turns, flips, whatever you want. Nice. Um, so feel free. You Beautiful. Anywhere you'd like to go. I appreciate it. Right, Thanks so much. Welcome. My pleasure. Excellent. Come on. We'll start out that way. There's the TV. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's what I got in my backyard. I love those things. What's that? The, the, the TV. That? Stays got. out all year. Really? Yeah. I think this is a pool. Heated in-ground pool with waterfalls. Attached garage, attached gas fireplace. Yeah, it's it's small, so it's probably like a four foot pole. Yeah, it's not a real in-ground. Yeah. Pool. This was a this was a renovation, and they're moving somewhere else now. They got a little one, obviously. Couple daughters. It really is nice. All right. Thank you very much. Nice All right. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So it becomes exactly what you said. It's a matter of if we find anything earth shattering over here, huh. there's always an option. Earth shattering, considering if we're able to pull that off, the other one, we're, right. we're in better shape, I think. Even well, this is beautiful. because it gives you the chance to do everything your way. You're not moving into someone else's house. You're creating your own. If that was 700 and that was 690, right. that's a whole other Different story. story. Yeah. All right, so we'll head over and meet you at Let's the other joint. Let's go. It's, uh, you could literally see the sign from oh, here. Oh, I knew that. That's yeah. Right. Hello there. How are you? What's up? I'm here. We have the inspection. Yep. And I just heard a horn honking, so I'm guessing that's Lisa. Oh, yeah, I guess that's probably Lisa. Okay. Yep. You're good to go? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's different perspective now because we're here yeah, just you. We're figuring what we can do with it. You've got, uh, you've got nobody else distracting you. That's part of the downside to looking at houses during an open house, is that you're, whether you're doing it intentionally or not, subconsciously, you're always paying attention to other people. Set up outside the way you want, and then with the next off season, you turn around and say, okay, now that we know, I tell people all too often, if, if you don't need to make changes, you just think you might want to, live in the house for a while so you kind of get a feel for the flow of it and how it's gonna work. so much better than what we have. Yeah. I mean, just this space alone, you walk in, and I mean, you can spread out when you get here. When there's, when there's, there's six of you in the other house, that's a challenge. Because I was just going to say, potential could either be really expensive exactly. or, or yes. really creative. You know, you, and creative sometimes can be really expensive. Yeah. But there, there's a lot of options, like you said. I mean, there's got to be some way you could do something over here if you wanted to. Um, well, the bathroom's behind that wall. Right, but I'm saying even no, if you no, wanted no. to build something out, if you wanted to... move this and put something there on exactly. the walls. You wanted to build a pantry or, or yeah. something like that, you could put in here. You get a break front, you could put it right up against the wall if you don't want to build. Too close the door, right, but you've, yes. you know, this is a six foot table. You've got, you've got a yeah. decent amount of room you know, here. I'm going to go outside while he's outside. All right, so Lisa, welcome home. Yep. Done. Yeah, so what we've been doing is we shoot one episode and it's anywhere from five minutes to, I think we got one that's like 30 minutes. But yeah. then we strip out one minute pieces yeah. as well and we yeah. put them on Instagram and we're starting to gonna start <laughs> filling them all in on YouTube and everything else and just kind of create that footprint. That's cool. And I look at it and say over time, I think more and more of that kind of stuff is gonna become important. I do too. As a broker, I look at it and say, I would love to build an in-house media team so everybody can do it. Right. Whether it be you get a full episode or a bunch of micro pieces or whatever it is. But yeah. I think if you do it and you leverage it, there's a lot of opportunity I there. I do so. too, I do too. And so, I think we're one of the few. I don't think a lot of people There's, like to do it. Most people don't get it. It's, <laughs> and it's like I said to someone the other I actually said on a video, I said, if you want me, 
If you want to list your house for sale, I'm not the person. If you want to sell your house, pack your shit and get out of my way. Let me do my job. And that's it. And if, if you get the right people who look at the data and understand and aren't greedy and are realistic and cooperative, things can happen quickly. There's no reason why a house should sit on the market for six months, ever. Agreed. Ever. How long is this one up? Um, a couple of days. Oh, really? Yeah, this was a fairly new one, oh, too. I, I don't know. Yeah. Because there was somebody looked at that room. Yeah. It would. I kept watching Nassau Shores, Nassau Shores. I listed it on Wednesday, uh-huh. and we right. had the open house. Oh, wow. That was fast. Yeah. But I did my job. Yeah. yeah there you go. No, and that's the. You saw a couple that were two or three hundred days old, right? Yes. Well, that's, that's crazy. And I don't, I don't mind showing those, but you've got to understand, we'll come in, and the 99 times out of 100, it's just ridiculously overpriced. Okay. Um, patio is pretty decent. Oh, your cover? It's in the garage. Oh, it's thrown on top of two. <laughs> it looks like it's in fairly good shape. But the problem with that is when they have them like stuffed in a the garage, they tend to get mold on them mm-hmm. underneath, depending on if they put it away wet. And then they could get um, moss from it. Okay. That's why they normally send them to a company. The company cleans them, the company puts them away. But it's fairly new, it's not that old. Good. Okay. So you might get a few more years out of it. Good. All right. Um, good, good. A few locks have to be adjusted. A few doors have to be adjusted. So it's all stuff like, you know, once you start going into a room and doing some spackling and painting, you're going to touch up some of those but things. But it's nothing anyway. that we should say we're really going to try to chisel no. them. We're not, right? Not really, no. Okay, all right, good. because I don't, I don't want to jeopardize. But that's what I'm looking at. I'm saying there's, there's from what I'm listening to, and, and I'll, I'll take a look at the report too if you want, but there's nothing on there that makes me say this has got to be a deal breaker or this is going to exactly. make us go back. And you I don't want to lose it. If you got 500 things that all cost 10 bucks, exactly. you, you know. Exactly, you do it room by room. That's the way you got to look at it. That's what I said. And, You're going to probably lose and that's, decorating anyway. And that's part of where, I'm, where I come from with it. I don't want to lose it trying to be yeah. a chintz. And, and that goes to the same mindset we came into this with, saying we could do it at this number, and we're going to get stuck in the song and dance with everyone else. Yep. Or we can come here and look, everybody else has gone away since we did that. So we bid over about. asking Keep. price, and she had one close to it, and I, she said she got another one coming in. I said, all right, what do you want to do? And we talked about 510, 515, and I said, oh, 610, 615. I said, but if we get to that number, we pretty much kick everyone else in the nuts, and they all go away. Right, right, and that's yeah. exactly what happened. Except for the people coming at 5 o'clock, which we deal with. But, here, but here's, here's the good thing. She's on your, <laughs> she, she's on your side as well. Yeah, you know, she it's wants it's to do this deal with us, and she's expressed that to them. So someone's going to have to really blow them away to make it happen. Right. So That's we'll what see what is. happens. Right. Yeah. Um, so once we tell them, their attorney will write up the contract, speak with Matt a little bit probably. He'll get it. He'll make some minor changes in verbiage because every attorney does it. Um, and then from there, you go in and sign it and send yes. it back. I did give you, right? Yeah. We'll I tried to do it in the beginning. Of the no, we're good. Yes, yeah. you did. And then you have my cell phone. So I got your cell phone. When you get the phone. report, you have any questions, you call me. Perfect. Um, if you move in, you have any questions, you can call me also. <laughs> right? Excellent. Uh, but most of the lights were working, yeah. the heat was working, um, temperature on the water, because that's why I checked that also. Because of those new on-demand water units, mm-hmm. some of the plumbers aren't configuring the house properly. Okay. So you wind up with lukewarm water. Okay. Okay, so the water coming out of the tap in the kitchen was 122 degrees, okay. which is fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you, sir. sir Thank you nice so much, you. Joe. Thanks I appreciate it. All right, call me for yeah, anything. Will All do. Right. Thanks. Take care. Joe Zambelli, expert home inspections. Use that word carefully. Not too many people deserve it. Thanks, my friend. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's been eight years since I seriously worked with a buyer. It's been a long time since I did that. But it's like riding a bike. The first couple, first couple minutes were a little uncomfortable. You shake off the rust, and they had no clue, which makes me feel better about it. Yeah. Yeah, pop that in at the end. What's that? It's good to always pop that in at the end. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, it, it's good because I know them, so I really got to be me, and I got kind of got to play with what I remembered and what I know. You know, it's not like I didn't know how to do it. I just didn't enjoy it. Yeah. And I felt because I wasn't enjoying it, sometimes I could have a tendency to lose patience. And I still find it to be very stressful for me personally. The buyer side of the business is, is much tougher for me because of that patience issue. But I can I can manage it from afar. But the actual showings and going through that process and the scheduling, it's just challenging for me. And I know there are people out there who absolutely love it. 
And that's why I'm looking to grow the team so I can give people the opportunity to do the job that only the, that they love to do. You know, there are some agents who love the listing side of the business. There are some who love the buyer side. There are many who do both and do it well. But I would love to find a handful of people who love the, building those relationships and, and getting to know people so that they can go make a good living doing only the part of the business that they really love.